Hi, I'm Teresa and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm very, very excited because I am doing my first unhaul, at least on the channel. I've done unhauls before and I'm just very excited because some of these books have just been sitting in a box in my wardrobe for months because charity shops are closed so I can't put them there and I've been like kind of keeping them so that I can do this video but I've not had time. But now I've got a fair stack of them and I want them gone so we're doing the video I'm very excited just quick before we start please remember these are just my opinions I'm not saying these books are bad or terrible or anything like that it's just that I've not personally enjoyed them or whatever reason I give for unhauling if they're your favorite book great good for you but they're not mine and yes I've got over 40 books in this video so like we're gonna have to go quickly and just get started there are a couple books I've only just added that I'm like not too sure about yet so if they end up back on my shelf don't judge me you just never saw them in this video so okay in no particular order I'm just going through the stacks I've got next to me first up we've got the Shadow Queen by CJ Redwine this is a retelling of Snow White that I read a couple of years ago I remember nothing about it and it's like the first in that series of like spin-offs set in the same world retelling different fairy tales which finds very cool but it, it just wasn't memorable at all i couldn't tell you anything about it i'm not going to continue the series i've got no attachment i just like the cover <laughs> so it's going right for, for my putting these <laughs> i've only got space to put them right the floor will do Next up I've got Love Rosie by Cecilia Ahern which was previously Where Rainbows End. I read this book just before the film came out and I only wanted to read it to see the film because Lily Collins and Sam Claflin, two of my faves, and I did enjoy the book. I was probably way too young to read it and I lent it to my mum as well which is like there's some emotional attachment to this but I'm never going to reread it if I want to re-experience the story I will watch the film so I also really enjoyed that and like mum and I went to cinema together to see it so we've still got that emotional attachment and it's huge <laughs> but this is the first one I read that's told through like an F story format it's in letters and text and stuff which is cool but yeah no I'm not going to keep it because I'm not going to reread it I've got to be honest with myself and I'll rewatch a film if I'm dying to experience it because the film's the reason I wanted to read it anyway because I love Lily Collins. Next up I've got the Shadow and Bone trilogy, not the Shadow and Bone trilogy. Next up I've got the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy by Lainey Taylor. I read this a few years ago after Daughter of Smoke and Bone had been on my shelf for years and I was extremely underwhelmed. I did not enjoy the series. <laughs> um, I think I did quite like the first book but then I just did not like where it went. I, just, I find myself so bored reading it and I'm not going to reread these, I'm not going to revisit them. This is a, one of the ones I've just added, these first few have been and this is one I'm probably most towing the line as well but honestly I'm not going to reread them, there's other books I want to read more. Some books just aren't for you and that's okay so it's time for these to go. I do just love the cover so. And I think this is like a special edition cover any fans of the series know and yes they're going and the final book of the ones I've only just added is The Fever Code by James Stashner this is like a prequel to the Maze Runner series and I read this I think only last year or the year before time's honestly just not real because it released so long after I'd originally read the Maze Runner and fallen in love with it that I'd kind of like lost my hype for it and although it was like decent it's not I don't know, it's, I'm not going to reread the series anyway and this one's not got the same nostalgia as the other books but it's cool. Um, I do like the cover, it's got like a C3 dust jacket. It's a cool looking book right but it doesn't even match the other books in the series so I can't have it sitting with them and then there's some nostalgia as I said. I'm just keeping it honestly because it's signed but um, yeah I'm not going to reread it if I I don't think I'm even going to reread the Maze Runner books but if I do someday I've not got the same nostalgia for this one and yeah goodbye but I'm not lying when I say I've got nostalgia for the Maze Runner I had a Maze Runner fan account on Instagram for a couple of years like that's what my Instagram I've got now used to be it was called Dead Gladers and people used to get mad at me for that username oh the good days the good days <laughs> next up just very quickly I have got the Harry Potter 
box set. Do I need to explain? Also, this one, what's it called again? The Cursed Child. They're going. Bye bye. Right, next up. Cersei by Madeline Miller. This is one so many people loved. It is not one that I loved. This was so boring. <laughs> I did not enjoy this. I did read this one last year. So it's like a fairly recent one as well. And it's just, it, I didn't enjoy it. I could understand why people did, but I was just bored reading it. So, so bored. So I don't see myself revisiting it. And if I get the desire to do that in the future, and it's not like it's difficult to find, I can definitely get it from the library. So goodbye. Next up is Wonder Woman Warbringer by Lee Bardugo. This is the first Lee Bardugo book I read. It was a few years ago when this came out. I didn't really enjoy it. I just, I don't connect with Lee Bardugo's writing. I don't know, there's something about it. I just, I don't get the emotion from it. And I definitely felt it with this one. There's no connection. I don't remember anything about it. I originally kept it because I wanted to buy the rest of the books in this series. So it was going to be like, different YA authors tackling different DC Comics figures but I've not picked up any of the others in the years it's been since this one. I doubt I'm going to... goodbye. <laughs> I'm not going to reread it or anything like that. No nostalgia. It's going. Next up is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. This one has been on my going out pile for a good while. I actually got rid of the second and third books because someone wanted to buy them off me but this was so bad. I genuinely do not understand how this got so popular. It is not good! It's this, I know I said that most of these books are just my opinion, they're not bad books. This is a bad book. Why? I don't understand how people enjoy it. I, it's not good. I don't want it on my shelves. Next up is The Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb. I read this one late last year and I had to audiobook it to get through it. It just, it wasn't for me in terms of writing style and everything. And I know that the way this trilogy works is that it gets better from this one. This is very much set in the scene. And while I can appreciate that, I do want to be actually invested and interested in the series and I'm not really. And there's so many other books I would much rather read. So I will respect Robin Hobb as being an incredible fantasy writer who's just not for me. And we're gonna we're gonna ditch it and if I ever do want to read it it's not like the books are difficult to find they're very very common my library definitely has them goodbye <laughs> next up is my life next door by Huntley Fitzpatrick this is a romance um that I read a good few years ago I vividly remember sitting outside eating a lolly and like ice lolly and reading it I actually read this in a day which I'm like impressed about but anyway I'm not interested I don't remember much about what it's about and I'm not one for het romances to be honest so goodbye. Next up is Moondust by Gemma Fowler. This one was a cover buy because it is gorgeous and I did read it and I did enjoy it this was a good few years ago as well but ultimately I remember nothing I don't think it was actually that good I'm not going to reread it there's no nostalgia I don't really want it on my shelves anymore, even though it is very, very pretty. <laughs> but I'm not keeping it just because of the cover, because I've got other books with pretty covers that I'd much rather have on display, so adios. Next up, I've got The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. So I also ditched Lord of the Rings, but I think I it's already gone. And honestly, I've tried reading this a couple of times. It's just not for me. I could get through The Hobbit. I have read it at least twice. Yes, twice. But Lord of the Rings, it was not easy to read at all. I did not enjoy it. I'm going to watch the films. I've still never watched The Lord of the Rings or The Hobbit films because I wanted to wait until I'd read The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings more recently. And, and like two years ago, I decided I would read it. And then never managed to do that. So I'm just going to watch the films because I don't want to read the books. You will not hear me saying that very often, other than in this video, but this, while I can respect what J.R.R. Tolkien has done, I did not like his writing. <laughs> it's so boring. Next up, I've got The Shadowhunters Codex by Cassandra Clare and Joshua Lewis. So this is like a companion to the Shadowhunters books, and 
I think if you're a big fan of the books, then it's really fun to read because you've got all the information, all the world world build oh, 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 world building, and it's got like writing in it from uh, Clary and Jason Simon having like little conversations in the margins, which is really fun to read, and you can get little jokes and it like makes a textbook fun, and I do love learning about like world building of different fantasy worlds to the point where I would read a history book on them, but. I'm not a huge fan of the series anymore, it's not one that I'm going to revisit, so no point in keeping it really. Next up I've got The Copper Gauntlet by Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. So this is the second book in the Magisterium series which I read last year. I had already read and loved The Iron Trial, the first book, and then finally got around to picking this one up and the rest of the series. And honestly the first book was amazing, it was like the start of such an interesting new middle grade series. But then it's like the authors fell out of love and this one wasn't very good and they just got like progressively worse and like they were just rushing through them and they didn't care and yeah <laughs> i'll keep the first one because i do have that nostalgia i loved it so much when i read it but i do not have that with this one and it is literally half the size of the other book like it the other one's like a proper big hardback and it's like twice the size and thickness so they don't even match, I can't have them on the shelf next to each other, so goodbye. <laughs> okay, next up is Goodnight Mr. Tom by Michelle Magorian, and honestly, I think I'm gonna put this one back on my shelf because this was one of my favourites, like childhood favourites, which says some stuff to be honest. This is set in World War II, and you follow a boy taken from London to the countryside. They evacuated lots of children there to keep them safe from the bombings, and yeah he just really comes into himself and has a fun time in the countryside and there's some really dark topics here for children which I kind of still can't believe I read like I can remember some of it vividly but I did really love this one I kind of want to keep it just for nostalgia so we're putting it back on the shelf. Next up is Norse Mythology by Neil Gaiman this is another one I read at the end of last year and like it was okay but I didn't enjoy it that much and I don't really want to keep it. Um, if I ever do want to revisit this for some reason I would be going for the audiobook because I think that's a much better experience than this was because I did read mostly the audiobook when I did this and it made it so much better than when I was reading physically. So yeah it just it wasn't my favourite. I think once you've read it you've read it. It's not one that I can see myself revisiting or wanting to. So yeah goodbye. <laughs> This video feels so repetitive, I'm so sorry, but it's all just the same reasons. Next up is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. So this is a book I love, but I have two copies, I do not need a second copy, and I prefer the cover of my other one, so that's why this one's going. Which one would you pick between the two of these? Like, I love this one, it's so pretty, and this one's just the normal cover, it's not as nice, so it's going. Next up is Fangirl by Rainbow Rowell. I did not enjoy this one that much when I read it. To be honest, I was mostly just interested in Carry On, which is like what our main character is writing fanfiction for, I believe. And then Rainbow Rowell released Carry On, so it's like, well, I've not got any reason to keep this one, didn't enjoy it anyway. And then Rainbow Rowell's just like not a great person either, so really just did not make me want to keep this, so goodbye. Next up is Catch Up Clarice by Annabelle Pitcher. This one, I mean, I like enjoyed it when I read it a few years ago, but it's not one I'm going to revisit, not one I have nostalgia for, just same again. Not one I really want on my shelf anymore. Next up is If I Stay and Where She Went by Gail Foreman. So I did enjoy these when I read them. There's no way I'm going to reread them though. There's no appeal there, no nostalgia really. I might rewatch the film if anything, but overall, not getting any interest in them. They're going. Goodbye. Next is The Disreputable History of Frankie Lando Banks by E. Lockhart. It's another one I read last year and like I vaguely enjoyed it but not that much. I don't remember much about it anymore and there's no reason I really want to keep it. So I'm not gonna. <laughs> next up I've got One of Us is Next and The Cousins by Karen M. McManus. So I ended up with two copies of The Cousins and I preferred the one that didn't have the sprayed edges so this is one. This one's going, still need to read it. And 
This one I just did not enjoy at all. It was not fun. <laughs> Which is a shame because I did really like the first book and it kind of like soured my memory of it I suppose. So yeah, this one not interested in. It can go and just want to forget that it even happened. <laughs> and next is The Witch's Kiss by Catherine and Elizabeth Corr. This one I actually DNF'd. Um, I was reading it late last year and it was very boring, nothing was happening, didn't care about anything. So I DNF'd it and I'm not gonna pick it up again and I'm not- <laughs> I've got no reason to keep it whatsoever. So going, going, gone. We're on to the final stack now of my four huge stacks I had. So first up we have got The Wild by Owen Lochanan and Eleven Paper Hearts by Kelsey Hartwell. I was sent both of these unsolicited from a publisher late last year, early this year. I can't remember. I read this one, it was not good. I can still see my press release in it. And I've not read this one, I don't want to. I know that I'm not going to enjoy it and I'm not going to read a book that I know I'm not going to enjoy. It's not fair to the book for me to write a negative review for it. And I have other things I'd much rather be doing with my time and I did just pick up this one because I felt guilty because I'd been sent it but really <laughs> I wasn't the one that requested it it's not my fault so I'm not gonna read them they can go next up is The Boy in the Red Dress by Kristen Lambert this is an arc and it is one that I requested however I just did not enjoy it that much and it's not one I see myself going back to and I'm quite upset because it sounded very cool. This is a murder mystery set in the 1920s. It's very queer and I was very excited for it but it just wasn't for me unfortunately. So goodbye, not keeping it. Next up is another arc and that is Out Now, Queer We Go Again which is edited by Sandra Mitchell. This is a collection of queer short stories. I read it last year. I did mostly enjoy it. it it was very like average because some of the stories were really good and other ones just weren't and I'm not gonna reread it so <laughs> it can go I might still read the this is like a sequel anthology to another anthology so I might read the first one I think there's more upcoming ones which I also might read but I don't see myself rereading so not bad but once you've read it once you kind of only need to read it once Next up I've got Fox by Nadine Brands. I also read this one last year. I was also just very very underwhelmed by this. I didn't enjoy it that much. I thought that this had a lot of potential and just did not use it very well and I didn't enjoy it. So I'm not going to keep it <laughs> basically which is a shame because I only did buy it last year but it's gone. We're not holding on to things that don't bring us joy. So adios. Next up, Axe and Eliza by Melissa de la Cruz. It's another one I read late last year. Didn't enjoy that much. We're not keeping it. This is like the first in a trilogy as well, but like this is a standalone in terms of the plot being resolved. There's no need to, for a sequel. Like, you know, when you read a first book in a series, there should be some hook that makes you want to pick up the sequel. Things that are left unresolved. There was none of that. So like, I'm not going to continue the series. I didn't enjoy this one that much. Why would I keep it? <laughs> Next up is Flawed and Perfect by Cecilia Ahern. I read Flawed. It wasn't very good. I'm not going to read the sequel. I don't want to keep them. <laughs> this is so boring because I'm just saying the same thing about all of them, but literally remember nothing about this. I forgot the plot of this as soon as I finished it. And you can so tell in my wrap up for it uh this it wasn't good this is what happens when you buy a lot of books and they sit in your shelves for years because you don't want to pick them up or you do but then you just don't for some reason and then you pick them up five years later and your tastes have completely changed and all the books are shit and you want to get rid of them <laughs> because that's what so many of these books are so yeah they're nice they're nice staying so the next book is just the same story which is chasing the stars by mallory blackman Bought it years ago, didn't read it for some reason, finally read it. I would have loved it back then, did not love it now. I'm not keeping it. I think I described this as like painfully heterosexual, which shows how much my reading tastes have changed. 
and also why I did not want it. So yes, that has been my unhaul. I hope that this has been entertaining and not boring because I feel like I've just said the same thing over and over and over and over again, but there's only so many reasons to unhaul something and that reason is that they're fucking boring and I read them years ago and I don't have any nostalgia, I didn't even enjoy them that much then, things like that. But yeah, it's over 40 books, gone. I can now do something with them because I filmed this video, I can stop procrastinating selling them or taking them to charity or whatever I'm going to do. And I've got so much nice room on my shelves for all the lovely queer books I want to buy and the ones that I've bought that don't have a space and are sitting in a little stack next to my shelves. <laughs> we don't need to talk about that though. And this also makes me feel slightly less guilty because I posted a haul recently where I hauled a decent number of books and I said you know I think I might do this every few months I don't buy that many books and I do enjoy haul videos but I I do need to like do all the books I bought over the past few month period but the issue is since that video which went up less than a month ago I've already bought the same amount of books I've got so many <laughs> I really just taken retail therapy to get me through uni way too far if I need to have some self-restraint. But yes, um, thank you very very much for watching this, I hope you enjoyed. I'll have links as always in my description to my social media if you want to follow me. I will not have links to these books because I'm not recommending them, but if any of these appeal to you for any reason, go for it! They're not necessarily bad, they're just not to my taste, other than Anna, Anna and the French Kiss. It is bad. And yes, thank you very very much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in another video soon.